What is up you guys? It is Brianna and today we're going to be testing out a pal that I have literally gotten so many requests from you guys to use and that is a brand new Morphe X Lisa Frank 35B palette and as you can see like the packaging of it is so cute. I think they have three variations and I got the little tiger one and what I really like about it though is how it opens like I think it's just such a cool concept because you have to like open it from this little tab right here. It kind of reminds me of like the trapper keepers and like all the folders I had as a kid and then you can see it has a cute little heart mirror in here, and then this is the color story. We're definitely going to be playing with a lot of color today because this palette is really bright and almost kind of neon in a way, like it has a really cool vibe to it. Now before we test out this cute little palette right here, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Faye as well. So since we are going to be playing with a lot of color today, we need to prime these babies up just to give the shadows a really nice base. So I'm just going to go in with my ABH Eye Primer, literally my favorite one. You can use whatever you like, you know, foundation, concealer, whatever you have in your collection. And I'm just going to be applying it to my eye using this fluffy brush from Moda. So I kind of want to do a rainbow look today to really fit that Lisa Frank vibe. So the first shade that we are going to be going in with is this matte blue shade and it is called Angel Kitty. And I'm just going to be taking it in the inner half of my crease and then blending it upwards towards my brow, but dang, like that has a lot of pigment to it. I've never used the 35B palette because when it launched, I wasn't as into makeup as I am now. But I kick myself every time I see somebody use it because it just looks like it's such a fun palette. So I'm really actually happy that Morphe brought it back. But at the same time, I kind of feel like it was a cop-out, you know, doing a collab with a palette that's already been released. And, you know, just kind of having the Lisa Frank packaging on it. I don't know about you guys. But I wish that they would have done a true, like, Lisa Frank-inspired palette with completely new shades. And, like, a whole different color story. And the brush that I'm using is from Luxie. This is a 205 tapered blending brush. But I gotta say, like, initially, this shade has a lot of pigmentation to it. And also, it's not like acting funny or chunky. It's literally blending out like butter. And I am going to go in with a second layer just to see if we can kind of build it up a little bit. So I mean like, yeah, it does build up, but honestly, right away, it has so much pigment to it. You wouldn't have to build it up if you didn't want to. So as you have that shade applied, now we're going to be going in with this center purple shade called Violet and Velvet. And I'm just going to be taking it on this Sigma E35 tapered blending brush. And I'm just going to be applying it to the outer half of my crease. But again, like right away, it has a lot of pigmentation to it. So I'm just going to go in with a second layer, but dang, like this is a really nice formulation for a purple. Give me like, look at that. So much pigmentation. It just is blending out like butter. It does not look chunky or weird. It's not giving me any harsh lines. It really reminds me of the purple formula in the um, 39S Such Gem palette, if you have that one, which is one of my favorite palettes from Morphe. It is so good. Like, if you're into purples and pinks, you need that palette. Like, it is so amazing. And I'm just taking, like, whatever's left on my brush and, like, finessing it into that blue. Kind of doing, like, a little back and forth. I can see why people were upset when this palette got discontinued because, like, the pigment so far is bomb. And I'm also going to round out my outer V2 with this shade just a little bit. So now we're going to spice things up a little bit. So we're going to go in with this really pretty neon pink in the palette called Puppy Love. And I'm taking the teeniest, tiniest amount on my brush. This is from Luxie. It's a 227. And I'm just going to go right on the edge of that purple. Just to bring a little bit of a pink pop to the look. We're also going to be adding some other colors soon too, but I don't know. I just thought this would be kind of fun. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit more. It's pigmented right away, but I want it a little bit more neon and bright. And this is one of those um, kind of like pinched blending brushes. So I'm just taking it the long way when I apply it. And kind of like tapping it down and then doing these little circular motions to buff it outwards. But whew, that is a fun pink. It's definitely like one of those like neon hot pink type of colors. I'm just going to go in with a little bit more of that purple that we used. Just to bring back a little bit more of that depth that we had. And then I'm just going to feather it right into that pink. Every time I look at this palette, this neon green shimmer shade called Peekaboo literally catches my eyes. So we're going to go in with this one next. 
Again, it's a shimmer shade, so I mean, you know, do with that as you will. But I'm going to apply it right here, kind of like in front of the blue. And then kind of like smoke out the edge towards my brow. So something like that. You know, just for like a little hint of green. And when you're doing this too, you want to make sure that you are not mirroring it next to that pink because green and pink, they do not mix. They make an ugly color and we do not want that. We just want like a kiss around the edge of the blue. And now I'm just going to go in with a little bit more blue on my brush and reapply it. You see what I mean though? We just have like this little kiss of green. It has been a hot minute since I have done a color melt and I don't know about you guys, but I'm just so obsessed with how this is turning out so far. But off camera though, I am going to like cut my crease. I'm just going to do a normal cut crease, you know, nothing fancy. And then afterwards, I'll be right back to finish up the lid. And then here's where I'm at right now after cutting the crease. And I'm just going to go back in with that dark purple that we used on this little shader brush from Lavish. And I'm just going to be packing it right on that harsh line. And with this, I'm not going to bring it in that far. Normally I would bring it about a third of the way, but I'm just literally covering that chunkiness. So I'm kind of doing something like that. So once you have that edge all nice and smoky, now we're going to start working on the lid. And I'm just going to go in with this kind of like neon purple shade. It's right next to that neon pink that we used, and it is called Lollipop. And using a flat shader brush, I'm just going to pack it right next to that dark purple that we just applied. And going maybe like halfway in. You know, something kind of like that. Just to kind of like smoke it out a little bit. And then using whatever's left on my brush, I'm just going right on top of it as well. You see what I mean? Like this palette just has so much pigment to it. Like it's really intense. One of the most pigmented Morphe palettes I honestly have in my collection. And then for the rest of the lid, we're just going to go in with the matte white in the palette called Blanca. And I'm just going to be taking this on a different flat shader brush. And again, packing it anywhere that that base is still showing. I really wish that they would have a shimmery white or like an icy color in this palette. I feel like it would have added so much. Because again, you could use it for stuff like what I'm doing right now. You could use it as an inner corner highlight. And I'm just going to go in with a second layer just to really build it up and get it super intense. And I'm just going to take whatever is left on my brush and kind of overlap it with Lollipop. Just doing this little tapping motion. Now, I'm just saying, I don't know about you guys, but this might be one of my favorite looks I have ever done hands down. Like, there's just something so fun about it. But off camera though, I am going to like clean things up a little bit and kind of like correct this shape right in here. And I'm also going to apply like complexion products, liner lashes, all of that good stuff. And then afterwards, I'll be right back to finish up the look. So here's what I'm at right now after doing that all off camera. And now we're going to start working on the lower lash line just to tie everything together. So I'm first going to go in with the matte right in the palette called Buzz. Ooh, this shade looks really pigmented, but I'm going to take it on this brush from ColourPop. It is in E26. And I'm just going to run it right next to that pink in this outer portion. And then about a third of the way in on my lower lash line. And then when I'm applying it underneath my lower lash line, I am doing back and forth motions just to kind of smoke it out. Man, like that has some pigment to it though. And also if you hear any like um, jingling, it is Wendy. She's playing with her ball. I don't know why she started it. But she just, she wants a little bit of attention right now. But man, like that is a pretty color. I'm also just going to take that brush that we apply the pink with and kind of like kiss the edge of the red with it. Like this portion next to the purple. And then next we're going to be going in with the orange in the palette called Hunter. And now I'm just going to be taking this orange on this little shader brush from Morphe and I'm just going to be popping it in the center of the lower lash line. And again, when I'm applying it, I'm just doing back and forth motions. And I'm also slightly overlapping it with that red. But honestly applied, I don't really see much of a difference between the two shades. Like, Hunter is slightly more orange, but they almost look near identical. And then the last shade that we're going to be using for the lower lash line is the yellow in the palette called Sunflower. And I'm just going to be taking it on this pointed shader brush from the Morphe X Madison Beer collaboration. And this is kind of like a butter yellow too. Like it's not like a neon yellow. And I'm just going to be popping it in the inner third. And I'm also slightly overlapping it with Hunter. But whew, that's a really pretty color too. So since this palette doesn't have a really good inner corner highlight, you know, something on the icy side, I'm just going to go in with my highlighter today, and that is Benefits Cookie. 
And I'm just going to be taking this on a little pencil brush from ColourPop. This is called an E28. It's just a really, really small pencil brush. It's really good for this type of thing or detail work. And I'm just going to be popping that baby right there and then slightly bringing it into the yellow. Just a little bit. So here's the finished look using the Lisa Frank palette from Morphe and I gotta say overall I love the quality of this palette and also the packaging is super cute too but I'm really actually kicking myself for not getting the original 35B because honestly like the quality of this palette is amazing. Again we only used the matte shades today I didn't use the shimmers because they just weren't really fitting the look I wanted to do so if you do want me to use the shimmers let me know and I can do that in another video. But like the mattes in here are so pigmented. Like you don't even have to build them up if you don't want to. So if you're somebody that doesn't like to build up your shadows or if you don't like to, you know, to have to hassle with them, you're gonna absolutely fall in love with this formula. Even the blue and purples that we used today were really nice because sometimes Morphe's purples and blues can be kind of hit and miss depending on the palette. But these ones were very easy to work with. They did not look chalky or chunky and they also did not give me any harsh lines. So when it comes down to it, would I recommend this palette to you guys? And honestly, if you love Lisa Frank or if you love the color story of it, I think you're going to really be happy with it because again, like the quality of the shadows in here is amazing. All the shades that we used today were extremely pigmented. You don't have to build them up if you don't want to. And they also blend like butter. So if you're a beginner, you're not going to struggle with this one. One thing I will note about this palette too is that it is mostly matte, so if you're looking for those really bright and rich matte colors, you're going to absolutely love the color story of this one. However, if you like a lot of shine and sparkle as well as mattes, you're probably going to have to go in with another palette for those shimmers because again, there's not really that many in here. To me, the only downfall of this palette is that it is a repackaged 35B. I mean, like, it's the original 35B with Lisa Frank packaging on top. And don't get me wrong, like, the formula of the shadows in here is amazing. I really do like this palette, and I do see myself using it a lot. But again, I wish that they would have brought back the 35B separately and then did a Lisa Frank inspired palette, you know, as its own. Because to me, it's just not as special knowing that this is a previous palette that Morphe carried, and I would have just liked to see a true Lisa Frank inspired palette instead. And in all honesty, it kind of seems like a cash grab because of it, but still, like, the quality of the palette is good, and if you like this type of color story, it's amazing and definitely worth checking out. But yeah, so in the comments down below, let me know what you think about this look, and also let me know if you'd like to see more looks using this palette. But as always, though, if you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and also give this video a like. And if you'd like to check me out over on my Instagram page or my TikTok, it is at Brianna Faye as well. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!